battle begins in five, four, three, two, one. Hello everybody, in this video we take a look at Muriel, a support character in the game Predecessor and oh boy, I enjoy playing with her. So in this video I'm going to show with you tips and tricks, gameplay and everything you need to know to make the best out of her. You really want to play with her, you have doubts, well just watch this video and decide afterwards. You know, when I play with her I feel like kind of a mercy in the game Overwatch, but come on, to be honest, you're a support character, you need to make sure everybody stay alive, including yourself. Now she's recommended uh, to the dual lane to help support the carry. Uh, due to her abilities, no cops, slow shield, buff attack speed and movement speed to allies. And even support herself while trying to keep the teammates alive. Alright, interesting stuff very soon, but first of all, let's take a look at her abilities. Alright, first of all, let's take a look at the passive. You see that uh, she deals extra damage for the basic attack, magical damage on hit. This is the passive ability. However, if you target allies, with an ability, other ability that you have, uh, they are granted sentinels on hit damage, same as you. Keep in mind that when the ability is not affecting your allies anymore, that buff is no longer in effect. All right, next one is orb, which is your range basic attack, dealing physical damage. All right, next one is alacrity. Uh, this is a shield. Basically, it's an orb, you throw it, it stays on the ground and it disappears after 8 seconds as you can see if untouched. Now if an ally gets it or you get it, you get an attack speed as you can see increasing and 20% decay movement speed for 4 seconds because it decays until it just disappears. So again this one packed a lot so it packs both shield, both attack speed increase and extra movement speed. Then you can give it to ally if they want to chase an AB or you want them to disengage. There's so many uses for it great buff for your teammates and you if you need it. The next one is Serenity, it does deal damage, it just shoots a bolt in a straight line, however it also slow downs for 2 seconds, 25% for 2 seconds is great, and also those slow target take 10% increased damage from all sources of damage. Alright, next one, uh, this is Consecrated Ground, now this ability puts a bubble, uh, which applies shields to everybody within it. There's many strategic ways to uh, use it, I'm gonna explain to you in a moment. And this is for 2.5 seconds, and when it explodes, it deals damage to all enemies inside it. Now you can see this is slow motion, you can see that I can place it wherever I want, I can see on the ground, and then drop it, and then allies get the shield. Alright, anybody who's inside. And then it explodes. Of course, nobody's inside, so nobody gets damage. Now the next one is a reversal of fortune which is her ultimate ability where you can reach any ally on the map. You need to pre-aim of course and tap in order to activate it, I mean left click. Now they're gonna get the shield immediately when you activate it but it will take some time until you reach them. When you reach them and land you're gonna deal uh, magic damage to everybody nearby and also knock them up for one second. Alright so this is the ult I am and go up and land and stun, all right, in dealing damage. Now, if you look carefully, you can see that now you got a shield, you see? Before I actually went up, so you see lots of shield for gadget, and when I lean down, I stun and deal damage. Now, of course, I'm going to show you more ways how to use it well. Of course, you can use it the entire map, but these are the abilities, all right? And again, all of them side by side. Alright, now when it comes to items, you, you should focus on items that increase your mana and also increase your cooldown. In the game, it's called Ability Haste. Also, having uh, physical armor and magical armor allows you to stay alive longer and it's essential that you stay alive in order to support your team. So again, the more mana you have, it allows you to sustain your abilities during the fight, especially it goes, you know, hand in hand, where you continue doing it more often. With Ability Haste, you want to have more mana. You're gonna find out that some fights kind of go, you know, back and forth. And if you can't support it and you're out of mana, basically, well, you become kind of useless. For more advanced build, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna post them on my uh, channel very soon. Now, when you play Muriel, it's essential that you pay attention to both your allies' health and also to their minimap. Again, because you can help teammates, doesn't matter where you are, once you unlock your ultimate ability. Now, 
The good thing about it, you can quickly change lanes, quickly go to the base, quickly support other lanes, SOS with three, quickly engage in team fights as long as another player located where you want to spawn. Now keep in mind, there is still kind of an air travel time that takes time, so keep that in mind. Other things you can do. For example, you can ult close range for just shield, stun and damage. Nothing's wrong with that. Now, Muriel can sustain lots of damage. Not that I recommend trying to fight many enemies, of course. If you're not basically, you're not a tank, you need to stay alive. But there are situations where you can shield yourself and basically it would be pretty hard to take you down. Now, because you have two abilities, the shield allies and you can pre-aim them, it allows you to put it at the right time in the right place, even in dynamic combat. Now, except your flight, uh, you don't have anything for mobility in terms of your basic skills, so make sure to stay close to your teammates, but in a safe place so you won't die, so you can support them. Now, don't use your abilities, you really don't need them. Wait for the right moment to use them and save mana. Now, your place initially is in the dual lane, so make sure to support your carry, both in terms of keeping the carry alive in secure objectives. Now keep in mind you can always secure yourself before engaging, just if not sure if you're gonna get hit, you can do this. But keep in mind it's pretty short, so again, unless the enemies are very very close, I recommend not doing so. But again, it's an option for you to do it, just in case. And of course, regardless, shooting yourself is always an option, so make sure to use it to stay alive. Now, I know it feels bad sometimes, but use your ult to quickly traverse the map just in case you need it in order to provide support. Keep in mind the close red ult is always an option because you give lots of shield to your ally and of course you can stun and deal damage. Now with more you need to dance with your allies, by that I mean again you need to pre aim properly where you expect your allies to be because really they don't pay attention to you. So you need to make sure that you aim at the right place at the right time uh, to give them the buffs that they need. Now again, not that it's optimal here, but try to make sure to put it at the right place so your ally can get the shield. You're expecting it to get back, but I want you to also catch the enemy so it'd be inside the bubble so we get hit. Well, I missed a bit there, but you get a point. Now always think about positioning, especially, you know, if you are not inside, this is like the best place to be. However, keep in mind some abilities require you to stay close to your allies in order to buff them up. Now make sure to help your teammates in the jungle to secure the objective or prime is a tough objective, not just being able to keep them alive, but also so they won't get close, so just in case enemies attack, you can deal with them later. Now keep in mind that, for example, your ability is slow, you can easily miss it, again, so staying close to your enemies uh, can be a good thing, but again, not too close and behind your allies. You're also safe when you're close to your allies because if somebody attacks you, they can attack back. Here's an example where I'm shielding and saving the life of the jungle, giving me both shield and speed and also shielding myself so I can disengage. So for that moment, it was actually a very satisfying moment, actually being able to save his life. Good luck, buddy. Now use your serenity uh, ability because it's a range attack to finish low HP enemies. There are situations like that, you know, so you can use it to your advantage. And use it of course to slow down enemies and increase the damage of allies so they can finish them fast. Now also use the shield to help support channeled abilities. I don't recommend just using an ult for it unless it's necessary like I did here when helping Gidong finish his ult. But use your shielding in order to make sure that the channel ult is executed fully. Now again, important, keep yourself alive. This is a situation uh, you can see that I'm supporting my teammate. Uh, however, uh, still surprised me from the back. and actually didn't see him until too late. See, just pop up in the minimap. And then I just use my healing and shield in order to keep myself alive, allowing my teammate to buy time for the cooldown or whatever need to do in order to finish everybody. Alright, let's take a look at some more plays so you can see uh, how she plays without me actually commenting about it.
Now, you see now why I really love her. She's absolutely amazing as support and should be, should be strong as a support because this is her main role. Basically, she's a pure support character. Now you know that many players use shield in order to stay alive, you know, in, in combat, in different situations. But the thing is that this is part of your basic toolkit and you can apply both to yourself and your allies. This of course alongside other active and passive uh, abilities that you get from items that allows you to be a very very strong support character. Now keep in mind, uh, because you're a pure support character you are lacking in other ways. Now keep in mind, because of that, it can be frustrating at first if you're trying to play with it because again, if a player doesn't perform well, for example, the one with your lane, you can really compensate for it in many cases because you don't have the utility for it. So you rely on your uh, carry to play well uh, in order to for you to perform well. Now in the right hand, she can be so powerful, especially when we are playing with good teammates. And the fact that she had great utility to actually keep herself alive, make sure you can continue to sustain that support for longer period of time. And that ability that you can actually traverse the map, you know, just spawning on allies, no matter where they are on the map, is a godsend. So for example, you can quickly transfer and go to the other side of the map to help a player push the left far lane or go back to the base when it gets attacked so many ways instead of just pressing B, for example, to call, which takes a lot of time. There's so many options there. As long as the player there, you can be there. Now, the more I play with her, the more I realize how amazing she is. But again, you need practice and time in order to make the best positioning, map awareness, paying attention to the HP bars, you know, teleporting to the right place, you know, when you teleport on allies. And the moment I thought the jungle is kind of a more demanding, well, being a support character requires a lot of attention to so many things. But if you give her that attention and time, you're gonna enjoy playing with her, I promise you. And that's about it for this video. More advanced topics will follow in future videos, so make sure to subscribe and give this one a little like. Enjoy playing with her. If you have any questions, suggestions, tips, and other tricks you know, let us know in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Claim your reward.